everyone and welcome back to this week's live broadcast where we're going to be discussing artwork. This is a highly requested topic. We're always getting questions on where we source our artwork from and how we created designs. And a lot of that artwork is coming from our sister company, Great Dane Graphics. All right, so we're going to be discussing specifically how his artwork is going to be very production friendly for whatever uh, type of print technology you're using in house or even outsourcing. All right, so it is um, highly production friendly, and we're going to be going over a lot of that. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to do a quick announcement for our workshop Wednesday. Uh, this is coming up next month. Seems like it right around the corner all right so we're going to be doing that the 13th and the 14th you can see there vinyl cutter boot camp for Roland GS 24 as well as GraphTech C6000 and then we're going to be doing a heat transfer vinyl 101 and 201 and it's going to be at all of those locations that you see there on the left hand side from Arizona California all of our West Coast areas and then also our other areas as well. So don't wait, seating is limited. You can sign up on the Stalls events page on our website. All right, so you just go to stalls.com and then scroll down to Stalls events and that is where you will find all the classes that you can sign up for. Hi, uh, Ruthie commenting in, thank you for joining me. If you guys have any questions throughout the broadcast, feel free to comment those in at any time. But other than that, I'm gonna go ahead and dive in since we do have a lot to cover today. All right, so I'm gonna start at the Great Dane Graphics website. All right, so you can see here that there are a lot of different options you have here, from direct-to-garment printing, to sublimation, to customizable templates, all of these are available for you to use with a subscription or you can do single downloads with them as well. So they have a variety of different options for you to source your artwork uh, from Great Dane Graphics. But I'm gonna dive into browsing art just so that you can see all of the different types of art that they offer. What's great about Great Dane Graphics is they're constantly adding artwork and they take requests. So if there's something specific that you need, you are also able to use that uh, or send that in and it will be created and added. All right, so they're always adding new stuff that you can use for a variety of markets. And that's not something you see often with a lot of stock uh, art programs. All right, so um, for instance, I'm just gonna type in one of the ones that we're gonna be using today. And you will see a variety of different uh, options just for typing in the word truck. All right, so this is the specific art that we're gonna be using today is this classic uh, red truck here. And it has the item number there that you can uh, use to download and keep that in mind for whenever you're using it in the future. But what I wanna show is over here specifically because it has all of these different file types that you need in order to do different uh, production, um, different production with. So digital printing, uh, direct to garment, print cutting, it is all uh, different options. And it will actually preview what each looks like whenever you select these. So the one we're gonna be doing is vinyl cutting detailed. All right, and you can see it has all the file types that I would need there to either work in Adobe Illustrator, Corel Draw, or even Roland or GraphTech Studio where you can import designs for vinyl cutting. And then you can also use CAD Works Live, which is a free online artwork program that we are specifically going to be using today. Now, before I dive into the artwork creation and the download, I do want to reference two new books that um, Great Dane Graphics rolled out this year, and it is how to vinyl cut, work with vinyl cut art in CorelDRAW and Adobe. So it shows you different styles of artwork that you can manipulate and customize in those artwork programs to make it work for you. All right, so these are $49.99. All right, I'm sure you've seen them if you've attended some of the shows for the first part of the year. And it is going to walk you through how you can do that. So it is a great guide to have handy in order to learn tips and tricks 
uh, especially if you're not able to attend classes all the time or see lives where people are walking it through. It's nice to have that on hand so that it shows you just how you can utilize his art in those hard to use programs if you're not familiar with it yet. So it will definitely show you everything you need to know for Corel Draw and Adobe, all right? So uh, this is the one that is for Corel Draw and this is the one that is for Adobe Illustrator or vice versa. Yeah, this is actually Corel Draw and this is Adobe. All right, so depending on what artwork program you're working with, that is gonna be able to show you your how-to and just tips and tricks on how to get your artwork working for you. All right, so why is Great Dane Graphics art so production friendly specifically for vinyl cutting? And that is the one thing I wanna talk about today because the weeding process can be so um, are not intriguing, but intimidating to a lot of people that are getting into the industry or just starting working with heat transfer vinyl. They think that the process takes too long. They don't want to have to sit there and weed out all the intricate details that some logos have. Uh, but what's nice about Great Dane Artwork is they take that into consideration. They take the user into consideration and they create art so that it is easy to work with and production friendly. So we're actually going to be going, um, doing a little bit of a face off here and I'll show you the artwork on my computer screen here that will actually be weeding so that you can see the amount of detail in each graphic. All right, so you can see here, this is the Great Dane Graphics Indian head that we're gonna be weeding. And then we're also gonna be weeding an intricate Indian head um, from, that was sourced um, from a competitor. All right, so you can see all of the intricate detail in each one, but you'll notice with Great Dane Graphics is they try to leave the cavities open for the most part so that you can start and pull out all at once. All right, so I'm actually gonna be weeding here and I have somebody uh, Brandy Kramer that is joining me today and she's actually going to be timing me so that you can see the difference and how this will speed up your production. All right, so I'm going to start with the um, competitor artwork and then go ahead and bring up my stopwatch and she's going to start timing me as soon as I start weeding. All right, so I'm going to be using our handy dandy weeding panel. All right, so the weeding panel is actually heated so that the heat transfer vinyl releases from the carrier uh, a lot faster. So this is another uh, little trick that a lot of um, people that are doing weeding a lot in their production use. They heat up their heat transfer vinyl so that it's releasing from that tacky carrier a lot faster because that will cut your production time in half. All right, so we're gonna be using that for both designs. All right, so I'm gonna start weeding away the Indian head from the other guys. This is not the Great Dane Graphics art. All right, so this has a lot of intricate detail. And I'm going at a normal pace here that I would be. I'm not extremely advanced in the weeding process, but I'm going at a normal rate. All right, so we can start picking out the other designs. You can see how the heat also helps with what we're working with, CAD cut fashion film, to allow that material to release from the carrier a lot faster. Now sometimes, and this is a little far away, so I'm gonna pull this back while I'm in weeding out these intricate details, but it's still remaining a little bit warm so that it's still a little easy to pull off. All right, so you can see that there are a lot of stop and start points that I'm doing when I'm weeding out all of these areas because the cavities are not open. So it's making it a little harder for me to work with. So you can see how much I've weeded here and I still have a few more cavities that I need to pull out. And this is what adds the extra time to your time spent in production are these extra little cavities. And while it looks great, it's just not ideal for being able to fulfill a lot of heat transfer vinyl jobs. So we wanna be able to find artwork or refine it even if our, um, our customers are providing the artwork for us because it can um, add time spent in production. All right, so I just have a couple more here. All right, so we have that complete. All right, what did I end up at? A minute 54 and, all right, a minute 54. All right, so we'll go ahead and reset the clock and see how 
long it takes me to weed the Great Dane graphics. So I'm going to start on the weeding panel and then pull off again just like I did with the other one so it's pretty even for us. All right, so I'm going to start down here at the corner on my weeding border. You can see as I'm weeding this away, the material is just peeling away like butter and some of the design or some of the heat transfer vinyl that is inside the design is also peeling out because of the, all of those open cavities. So this is still my first pool and I have a lot of the other design of the design already weeded out. All right, I'm going to pull off just for fun of some of those small areas so that nothing small is getting picked up. pick up there so I'm going to place that down all right and that is done okay so about half of my time weeding the other design compared to this one all right so that was a minute and that is a great idea thank you Brandy for your assistance and uh, that is a great um example of how you can save time in production by using artwork that takes the vinyl cutter or the production worker in mind when working with this product. All right, so I do see some questions and comments coming in, so I want to address those. Love the weeding panel. Yes, me too. Mike saves a ton of time. Is there any um, shrinkage with vinyl when using the weeding panel? No, the material is not shrinking. This isn't that high enough of a heat for that heat transfer vinyl to start shrinking. This is roughly 120 to 130 degrees, so you don't have to worry about that. Right, Bangladesh, that is awesome. Thank you so much for joining, and I am purchasing Saul's products from South Korea. Cool. All right, so we're going to go head back to creating artwork using Great Dane Graphics art. All right, so I'm going to open up the design that I already have created and show you how we used that artwork I showed you earlier, uh, that red truck, to create a cool Valentine's Day graphic. All right, so this is the di design that we're going to be creating here. And... Um, I'm going to show you just how simple this is, okay? All right, so let's first take a look at how we download, all right? So we're going to start from step one. So this is the truck that I edited in CADWorks Live, all right? So I went ahead and clicked the download button and then click yes, download zip file, okay? So I have the vinyl cutting detailed and then there's vinyl cutting basic. All right, so this is just one solid piece where I wanna actually be able to add um, another color. So I'm gonna go with the detail in there just so that it adds a little more profitability whenever I am actually selling the finished piece. All right, so this is the download file. So I'm gonna double click that and it's gonna give me an option of all of these different file types, depending on what I need for uh, what artwork program I am using. All right, so I'm gonna be using CADWorks Live and they take PDF. So I'm gonna save this. I'm actually just gonna drag it to my screen here so that it's easy to find. I'm just gonna replace the old one that I had already done that with. All right, so that is how easy it is to get the files. You just sign in or log in with your um, credentials and then you have the option to download as many files as your subscription allows you to. Okay, all right, so let's go back to CADWorks. And we're gonna start by importing that. All right, so I'm gonna leave this off to the side just so that I have something to reference so that we can create that, recreate that again. All right, so file, and I'm just gonna click import. I'm gonna click browse. All right, so we're searching for E47 or 74. There we go. No. Okay. Can't find it. There we go. Okay, I just had to click my desktop. Okay, <laughs> thanks for bearing with me there. All right, so 
you can see um, all of the cut lines in this truck as soon as I click wireframe. All right, so you can see that I'm working with two colors here. But what I want to do is change my background color so I can see how, exactly how many colors are showing up in this. All right, so it's just showing as one. I want to be able to add a few different colors in there to be able to add different heat transfer vinyl colors. All right, so I'm going to go to shaping and break apart by curves, okay? That is going to break each piece apart so that I can manipulate it to be however I want. So I'm gonna click undo. I'm gonna make go ahead and fill in my background color to what I want it to be. All right, I'm going to right click that and click to back so that all my other cut lines show up in the front. All right, so now what I need to do is start punching through the areas where I want it to be open. All right, so I'm going to select multiples at once. So I don't have to select one each individually. So I'm going to group these four circles that I don't want to be there anymore. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and delete these two because we're using a different clip art for that. All right, so I'm gonna group these two circles that are the rims on the tires of the truck and I'm going to combine them by clicking Condense. All right, so that Condense button is under Shaping, and then whenever you have something selected, you just click this Condense button. All right, so I'm gonna hold those in by holding the Control button and then selecting my background piece, which is that red piece, okay? So after I selected both of those, I'm going to Shaping and then Back minus Front. Right, so this is going to take those two circles that are in front of the background and punch them through. All right, so now I don't need to work with these anymore. I can delete those. So now we need to get back to our other cut lines there. So I'm going to right click this again and select two back. All right, and then this is going to be my uh, front color. All right, so I'm going to change this to pink. And then I still have my windows here that are there. So I can select, oops, undo. I can select those two things and group them together by clicking condense. And then doing the same thing I did with those circles. And that is punching them through the background. If I can get it selected, there we go. All right, so again, just selected those two, hold the control button in so that it kept those selected while I was selecting the background color. So now I'm gonna sh go to shaping and then back minus front, the same thing we did earlier, and punch those through. And now I don't need to work with those anymore, so I can delete those. I'm gonna click that red and push it to the back. All right, so I can either condense these and, or I'm gonna condense these two actually. So we have two pieces of the pink that we wanna be grouped together. So I'm gonna condense those. But what I wanna do is leave these two pieces separate for right now because I'm still going to add other uh, detail to the truck by using some clip art from CADWorks Live. All right, so I go to my clip art button that is in the CADWorks Live and type in the clip art that I'm looking for. All right, so I'm going to select this group of hearts so that I have multiple to work with since I'm gonna be positioning them differently on my truck here. All right, and I manipulate those just a little bit. Instead of making them skinny, I just scroll them down to make them a little shorter. All right, so I'm going to shaping and then I'm going to ungroup. All right, so break apart by regions, and that is going to ungroup each of these. So now I can select these and use them however I see fit moving forward. All right, so the first thing we need to do is drop this on the truck door and punch that through the pink so that we can add that to the truck. All right, so we're gonna hold in the control button, select the pink part of the truck, and do that same back minus front. All right, push that off to the side. Use another heart for my headlights of the truck. And get those positioned how I want them. I'm gonna rotate it a little bit. All 
And I'm just gonna to duplicate that by hitting Control D. I'm gonna adjust these a little bit more so they're not looking so crooked on there. And make this one a little bit bigger than the back one since that side of the truck is a little more forward. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click shaping and condense so that those are grouped together. And now I can punch them through the red as well. So shaping, back minus front, remove those. And now I have my heart headlights. All right, so I'm gonna add some more detail by dropping in the hearts into the tire area. Duplicate and shrink so that it is proportionate to the truck. Now I can do the same thing I did with the headlights by grouping those together and then making them part of the artwork. Okay. So we have that done with the truck. Now we want to add some text and hearts to the truck in the back, All right? So I'm gonna delete him because I accidentally made him crooked earlier. All right, so I'm gonna make these bigger so that I have something to work with. All right, so we're gonna add text to this heart first. All right, so we are uh, duplicating this heart up here. So I'm going to go to add text, type in my word, which is love, and then select a font. All right, so these are fonts that I have downloaded either from websites that offer fonts, um, such as dafont.com, and just imported them by using this upload font button. All right, so this accepts a zip file and a TTF file, which is, which is a true type font. All right, so it does not accept the open type font, so make sure that whenever you are downloading or purchasing a font, it does have either a zip file or a true type font option. All right, so then you would just download and browse. I'm not gonna browse again because most likely I'm not gonna be able to find what I'm looking for. Uh, so I'm just gonna cancel. But that is how you are going to add text that you want into CADWorks that is not already offered. For this particular word, I use this, this script font as well. I'm not gonna try to pronounce that because it's, I'll butcher it. All right, so okay. Now, I'm gonna switch to wireframe and make this big so that you can see what happens whenever we are working with cursive font. So you'll notice that the lines uh, connecting each letter actually run into each other instead of just connecting. So those cut lines will be there if we do not weld these letters together, right? So we need to go to shaping and click weld and then that will get rid of that overlapping and the cut lines within the text. All right, so we'll get out of wireframe and then I'll position this in my heart so that the text shows up inside of it. All right, so I'm gonna select both of these and do the same thing I've been doing the whole time, which is back minus front, front because that is gonna punch that through and now it is reading as one piece instead of two. All right, now I'm going to add the XOXO to this heart here. And go back to my font. And I'm gonna make these a little tighter so that it fits in the heart a little better by Min uh, doing the negative character spacing. So I'm just clicking the down area where it says character spacing. And that is going to make them tighter together so that I have more area to work with in the heart. All right, gonna make them a little bit skinnier. And even more so. 
and now we'll do the back minus front. Now, if I was concerned about this not being exactly center that I need it to be, there is an option that will center and will, that will center it completely. And that is in the align section of CAD works. So I'll select both of those and go to align and then center middle and that will automatically center it for me. Now this text is a little bit too big to be exactly middle of the heart. So I'm gonna adjust that up a little bit. All right, but that is an easy way to get things perfectly lined up whenever you are doing uh, artwork for a customer. All right, so again, back minus front, and now we can get rid of the text. And we're gonna leave him blank so that we can group them all together like we did up here. All right, so now we need to position them in the truck so that they look right. Right, and this is just all by doing back minus front a lot. All right, so how I created them up there was using the pink to punch out a piece of this so that it is lining up correctly. All right, so this is a little bit bigger. We'll make that pink and I'm going to bring this pink part of the truck to the front so that it overlaps that heart. I'm gonna bring this down just a little bit, the heart specifically, so that it punches through. So I'll select the heart and the pink part of the truck, go to shaping and back minus front. And now this bottom part of that heart is gonna be gone. All right, and we'll line it up so that it looks like it is inside the truck as opposed to just laying on top. All right, we'll do the same thing with the other hearts as well. I'm gonna have this overlap, or the pink overlap this shortly as soon as I get this adjusted where I want it to be. I'm going to thin that out a little bit. rotates and this one is going to be red. All right, so we'll send that to the back so that it's being overlapped. Okay, and now I'm going to use the last one just to add in there to fill this negative space. And this is going to be pink as well. Bring that to the front and rotate it on its side. Okay, so now that we have the hearts in the trunk of the truck, we need to make sure that this heart, because these two are right next to each other, is going to show up. So you'll notice, I'm gonna zoom in to this section right here you'll notice that we did create a little gap where this heart lays so that it is not being cut as one piece whenever we send this to the vinyl cutter. All right, so we'll zoom back out. And how we're gonna do that is add a contour, right? So I selected my heart by just double clicking that. And now I can go to add effect, All right? This is going to bring up a variety of options and I'm gonna add just a small contour, All right? So that small contour is at a, an offset of 0.10. So I'm going to decrease that a little bit so the line isn't too big and punching out too much of the other piece of clip art. So I'll click OK and do the back minus front on the pink and then also with the red. All right, so now that is just laying in there instead of laying on top and becoming one part there, all right? So then we add our text and I'm using the same exact text that I used for the hearts. So I just type in what I want in the text and then select my font. And what is the last thing we need to do with this? Weld, 
All right, so we will make sure that this is being welded by selecting it and going to shaping and welding so that our cursive text isn't uh, overlapping each other and creating cut lines into the final uh, piece whenever we're weeding. Okay, so that is exactly how we utilize Great Dane Art to create a graphic for Valentine's Day. All right, I went ahead and already vinyl cut this so that you guys don't have to sit through that process. But at this point, all I would do is send to vector cut. And that section is file. In CADWorks, there's a file button. So you click that and then you go to send to vector cut. All right, vector cut is also a free download. All right, so um, it comes with CADWorks Live. So whenever I send a vector cut, a little file will pop up. I will double click that and then it will bring up vector cut for me. All right, so this is actually what it's going to look like whenever I import just the one that I created. All right, so what's great about vector cut is it breaks apart the colors for you so that you know what piece of your graphic is what color so you know what heat transfer vinyl roll you need to load into your vinyl cutter. All right, so if I'm gonna cut the pink first, I'll select my pink and then get it set up for my vinyl cutter. All right, and then I would do the same thing with the red as well. Now before I do that, before I send it to cut, if I'm working with heat transfer vinyl, then I need to make sure that I'm mirroring. All right, so just always remember to mirror if you are working with heat transfer vinyl. All right, so that was a quick little tutorial on how you can utilize Great Dane Graphics Art and uh, use them to your benefit because it just is so good for speeding up production. Now, I added some cavities to that, but it was great been being able to uh, weed out that truck without having all those intricate little pieces that you normally do when you're working with other stock art. All right, so we'll head over to the heat press and heat apply the design that we just created. All right, so I'm gonna be working with the Hot Tronics Fusion. All right, it is already set up on my fashion film setting. So we're at 320 degrees and we will be applying a cotton t-shirt. All right, so this raglan uh, is sourced from Rabbit Skins. And since we are working with a youth t-shirt, I went ahead and loaded on my 11 by 15 platen. All right, so this is gonna give me easy threadability with small garments or slim fit garments, such as ladies t-shirts, all right? And now I don't have to worry about this stretching over a 16 by 20 or something too large for the graphic. All right, before I apply, I do wanna release any moisture or wrinkles in the fabric. And I'm already set up for a preheat on here, right? So that five seconds is gonna count down for me. And that gives it enough time to release any moisture or wrinkles. And now my adhesive from my heat transfer vinyl is going to apply very durably. All right, so this is the, uh, fin the final uh, part that you need to do in your production, the cutting and the weeding, All right? And we are using two fashion film colors. We are using the bright red for the first layer. Now, one thing I need to make sure that I do with this is tack it, right? So the tacking method also comes in handy during production, not only because it speeds up production, but it allows the heat transfer vinyl to cure on there long enough so that it holds, but not long enough that it's going to start shrinking. So earlier we got a question about whether or not heat transfer vinyl will shrink using the um, weeding panel, right? So whenever heat transfer vinyl is under high heat for a long dwell time, it can shrink just enough so that whenever you go to line up your next piece, the registration isn't accurate, right? So it's not shrinking so much that it's distorting your entire design, but it's just enough so that whenever you go to line in another color, sometimes it's just not matching up. So if you've ever experienced that, it's because you aren't using the tacking method. So if you do incorporate that into your application, that will help you with alignment in the long run. The next color we're using is Fashion Film Electric. And this is actually a sneak peek of a new product that's going to be launching next week. 
Okay, so this is one of our new electric colors, so stay tuned in order to stock up on this color. It's really popular right now. All right, so I'm gonna be using that as my last layer, and since we are doing the last piece of the design, I can apply it for the full application. All right, the full application is 15 to 20 seconds, so now I'm able to finish that off with the last piece and it's a hot peel, so as soon as that is done applying, I can just peel that off and it'll be complete. And now the design that we created has completely come to life with the Fashion Film Electric and flat Fashion Film Bright Red. All right, what's great about this product whenever you are layering is um, being able to still have a nice soft feel after it was layered. And I just love how the electric looks when the light hits it because it shows nice and metallic and that is something really sought after um, in retail. All right, so let's go ahead and check comments and questions. I've been talking a lot. All right, can CADWorks work with a Cricut machine? So um, that's a common question we get as far as um, some other vinyl cutters that are uh, smaller than the Graftec and Roland. So Cricut, Silhouette, Brother Scan and Cut. Uh, CADWorks is my baby. I use it all the time for any artwork creation that I do. But vector cut, the middleman that is sending your design from CADWorks to your vinyl cutter is not compatible with those vinyl cutters yet. However, you do have an exporting option in the CADWorks software. And I will show you where that is at now. All right, so let's head back to CADWorks. All right, so if I wanna export this, going to remove this one. I'm going to export this. I'm going to go to file and click export. And then I have the option to um, export it in any file type that I want. Now, whenever I'm exporting artwork to bring into Cricut Design Space or Silhouette Studio, you can export it as a PNG. All right, PNG is going to, going to remove the background entirely. And then you'll trace your artwork in the design software that you're working with. So as of right now, Vector Cut isn't going to automatically send your designs to cut to a Cricut or a Silhouette, but you're able to export and utilize it that way. All right, Laura, I love it too. Wait until you see all the other colors that are coming out. They're so awesome. And that looks like that's all that we have. All right, so thank you guys so much for joining me. We will be back on Monday uh, talking about um, a lot of other CAD cut materials that will be rolling out in new colors. So stay tuned for Monday, and thank you guys so much for joining me today.